goes like this. Father, unleash the power of the Holy Spirit to bring spiritual breakthrough in my life. Well, hey, let's all stand up and let's get into some worship. Oh, well, okay. All right, Daniel. You got me there. You got me there, pal. Your life. 
sing for all that you've done for me. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, um, we just say uh, thank you for your amazing grace. And God, we sing about that tonight. And God, as um, Mark comes and speaks to us, God, would you um, just open our hearts and open our minds to what uh, you have for us tonight. And we love you so much. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. I know, 2020, throwing sanitizer bottles everywhere. I believe this last year has been incredibly hard, and each of us has had really big ups and probably even really even bigger downs in our lives. I know for me personally, it's been one of the most stressful years of my life, personally as a pastor and even as a spouse. It's been chaotic. It has been stressful. And yet at the same time, I've seen God's peace break through on a number of levels. Has anyone feel like they're more stressed out this year than they have any other year of their life? A couple of you. Like it's probably been the most chaotic year of your life. I'm just going to review a couple of things y'all have got to experience in the last 365 days. This is not to make you sad or depressed, but just to show the ways that we've grown uh, together. First, you got this thing called spring break that lasted, what, like two weeks? Y'all remember that? Three weeks, and then it ended up being like, oh, we're actually going to have you guys finish the school remotely. Uh, those who have already graduated last year, they were not going to be here right now. But last year, they uh, got a fun thing called driving by, and they got to graduate that way. Um, school dances were canceled. Sports seasons were canceled. No 2020 graduation parties. No buffet lines of food that you would go up and eat. Mask, lots of masks. In fact, there's only some fifth graders that I swear this is all I know of them. They wear like a baseball hat and they wear a mask. And like this is the only bit of the fifth and sixth graders that I know, or mostly fifth graders, because they're new to Outbreak. And it's really hard to tell who they are. And so if I saw them at Kroger's in like six months from now without a mask on, I probably would have no idea who they were if we're allowed to have masks not on in Kroger in six months. I don't know. I'm not trying to predict the future. Your vacations probably got canceled. Mission trips got canceled. We did one virtually. Sports seasons were either canceled, changed. Fall uh, retreat and confirmation retreat looked so much different. And much more has changed. And all of this adds stress to your life, correct? All of this adds a little level of chaos that previously probably was not there. Everything seems to be unchanging or everything seems to be changing, not unchanging. It seems unfamiliar, and you just don't really know where to put your feet on solid ground. At least that's been for me. So tonight we're going to work through what it looks like to find God when we're anxious, when we're stressed out. And so scripture, one of the favorite things about scripture is it is unchanging, but inside scripture it talks about things that do not change. And so in Hebrews, we find this passage that says Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And that's a scripture I've been holding on to very tightly recently because I know no matter what is going on in my life, that Jesus has not changed. Jesus is not different because COVID-19 hit. In fact, he was as present then as he is now. And he's going to be as present in the future as he is today. Even if we do not feel him, his presence is still there and available to us. When everything seems to be canceled and changed, know that God has not changed. That is a hope we can hold on to in the midst of all of the change around us. So when you're feeling anxious or down or depressed, remember these words from the Apostle Paul who wrote to a church in Philippi in Philippians 4, 5 through 6, these words. Do not worry about anything. I'm going to pause right there for a second. Who's worried about something today? Okay, keep your hands up. Who's worried about something this past week, this past month, 
If you don't have your hands up, I think you're probably lying, just being honest. Um, There is a lot of worry, you can put your hands down, a lot of worry that each of us is going through. Scripture points out, do not worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank him for all he has done. Then you will experience God's peace, which exceeds anything we can understand. His peace will guard our hearts and minds as we live in Christ Jesus. So whenever we're anxious, one of the things you can do is pray. One of the things I like to do as well is to sometimes quote scripture. It does not have to be long passages. It can be just a simple few words. And maybe even for you, maybe something you can take from tonight's message is this simple line, do not worry about anything. Instead, Pray about everything. So when you feel anxious, when you feel worried, maybe that's the thing that comes to your mind. The one I've been doing is from Psalms 46.10 that says, be still and know that I am God. When life seems chaotic, that's the scripture passage I put back in my brain. Because the world's telling me all kinds of things. But God's word tells me to be still and know that he is God. He is still on the throne. He still rules over everything. And so, whatever we need, we can pray for. Small things, big things, medium-sized things. It does not matter. And I think the other thing I love is that God cares about us so much that even if we're just rambling, he's going to listen to us. Even if we just sit there in silence, he will listen to us. And in fact, other parts of scriptures talk about the Holy Spirit will interpret our moans and groans, which is like when we don't have the words to say, God will interpret what our need is, which is pretty amazing that having the Holy Spirit within us being a follower of Jesus allows that to happen because God cares for you. Have you ever felt like you're not going to make it through this week? You've got too much to do. Your to-do list is just way too long. Your homework pile is out of this world. You have too many soaps to read between now and Confirmation Sunday. Not looking at anybody. I have committed to too many different things. Tencent, you did them, I know. You showed me today. You're amazing. I have committed to too many things. Anybody just feel overcommitted, even in the midst of COVID? Like, you're overcommitted and there's nothing to do, correct? Like, it's crazy sauce. It makes no sense, but that is what is happening in our world today. That is what is happening in our lives. So in the midst of the chaos, in the midst of the craziness, Jesus tells us these words from Matthew chapter 6. Do not worry about tomorrow. For tomorrow will bring its own worries. Today's trouble is enough for today. I do not believe there's any truer words than these. And Jesus doesn't say today's easy. Did you notice that? Like, look at the scripture. Today's trouble is enough for today. Jesus realizes the stress and the strain. Trust me, he like went to a cross and died for us. He knows what pain is. He knows what suffering is. He knows what this actually means. And so what I want to tell you tonight is God has got you. Through the difficult times, through the anxiety, through the stress, through the unknowns of what even COVID is going to look like in six months from now, or what life is going to look like in six months from now, or two days from now, guess what? It does not matter. Tomorrow, don't worry about. Today has enough struggles and enough stress, and know that in the midst of it, God has got you. So how do we practically find God when we are anxious? I think the first thing is to give your worries and cares to God. Did you know that was actually a scripture passage? Like I just quoted scripture to you. It comes from 1 Peter 5, 7. It says, give all of your worries and cares to God, for he cares about you. That wasn't like some clever thing I made up. That's in the Bible. Give all of your worries and your cares to God, for he cares for you. So when life just feels like it's too much, God has you. When you're overwhelmed, when you're anxious, anxiety, depression, whatever is going on in your life, give it to God. My thought is if God can create everything we've seen in just a number of days, how can he not take care of us today? If God can create everything you've seen in a number of days, how can he not take care of you, one person today? In fact, he takes care of all of us Every single day. Second thing is if you need help, find or get help. This is not a contradiction to my previous statement. If you need help, you're overly anxious 
whatever is going on in your life, depression has come in, anxiety has come in, and you can't do it yourself, find the help that you need. That often starts with somebody you love and trust. Talk to them about it. But don't let it stop there. If it's so big they can't help you, get professional help. I know of a few Christian counselors around the Columbus area and the extended areas that can and will help. They are certified. They know what they're doing. I'm not a counselor. I'm a pastor. I'm not a counselor, so I can help you to some extent. Our volunteers love you and support you and can help you to some extent, but there's some things that we just need to bump up to that next level and know that that's okay. Know that it's okay. Like if you have to take some kind of medication for whatever, it's okay. And in the midst of that, God has still got you. It does not neglect the scripture on the past. We still give our worries and our cares to God just because you're seeking additional help. Seek out the help you need. Do not be afraid to ask. I spent many years being afraid to ask for help, especially on this topic in particular. And for the first time this year, I started to take medication for some things going on in my life because it's really hard some days. Just being really honest and open with you guys. Some days are very, very difficult. I have a wife who's very sick. I have a lot of things going on in my family and stuff like that, and I needed some additional help. Do not be afraid to get that. And the last thing I want to talk, the last practical application is to slow down. And I mentioned this the first week we talked in this series. Learn to say no. This is a very hard concept. It's two letters. We should be really easy. In fact, when we're little, the word no comes out of our mouth probably more than any other word we can say besides probably mom and dad, but probably it's going to be no. Um, it's a word that we use a lot when we're younger, and as we grow older, we don't want to make people mad, so we refuse to use the word no. We begin to say yes to literally everything. We don't want to miss an opportunity, but sometimes we need to slow down. Sometimes we need to learn to say no. And sometimes when we say the word no, we begin to see what is essential in our life and what is just filler. The filler things in our life are not always bad. They're called filler. But the substance, the essential things we need to focus on and spend our time and our energy on. And I would have to say that if you're not spending your time and energy on the things that matter the most, you have no other time. You're overcommitted. You don't know how to say no. I'm the same way. Something I've been working on for years and years of my life. And so the last thing I want to kind of walk through is what it looks like to live a faithful life in the midst of being anxious, in the midst of being anxious. And it goes back to the words on the screen. Give it over to God. Know that he cares for you. Find the help you need. Slow down if you need to. Do not breed chaos in your own life. We sometimes are the person who is creating the chaos. Sometimes we have to stop. Sometimes we're creating chaos in our friend group. Sometimes we're creating chaos, chaos on social media. You all know who I'm talking about. Like no one in particular, but like you know what I'm talking about. The chaos of social media that just like sucks you in. And so trying to figure out how to not breed chaos, but know that God has a plan for your life. I used to be fixated a few years ago on figuring out a five-year plan for my life. Some of you will be graduated from college in five years. Some of you will be doing this in five years. And I was infatuated with finding out what does God want from me in five years. And I spent many, 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 many hours praying, asking God. And he kept bringing me back to the same scripture. So do not worry about tomorrow, for today will bring its own worries, for today's trouble is enough for today. And I had to realize it's not about the five-year plan. It's not about where you're going to go to college or what work career you're going to have. Those are important things. Don't get me wrong. Spend time in prayer deliberately praying over the direction God is going to have you. But do not breed chaos in your life that if you don't have a five-year plan that you can like stick a flag in the ground and say, this is where I'm going to be in five years. It's okay or a 10-year plan, or whatever that looks like for you. Because I think what happens, our obedience is a day-by-day, step-by-step thing. If we're so focused out here, we can't figure out where our feet need to hit solid ground in front of us. With all the chaos and stress around us, we're going to be so focused out here that we're not living faithful to the people next door to us, to the people in our family, to God himself, because we're so focused out here on what could be instead of living in the moment. 
And again, I'm not saying don't look to the future, don't think and pray about those kind of things. Please do. But do not let that become chaos in your life that you get so anxious that you have to have this plan. Because you know what? My time in college changed multiple times. I never knew my parents were going to fly to Arizona and like pretty much start a whole new life down there while I was still in Ohio. Like my parents moved cross country my first year of college. Total chaos. Like, what do you do in the midst of that? I had free tuition at Miami University. Free tuition. I think you're going to Miami, aren't you? Possibility. Possibility. And like, given free tuition, and then that getting pulled away from you, like, pulls out completely everything underneath of me. And so I had to realize, like, okay, where direction is God wanting me to go? And putting feet on the ground and following step by step day by day. So I want to encourage you guys to figure that out, what it looks like to be faithful step by step. So let's pray. God, you are good, and often we are not. We are broken, sinful people living in a world of brokenness, and yet you redeem us and call us to something better. You have a plan that starts day by day, step by step, guiding and directing us through the chaos of this world. And Lord, you are not a God of chaos, but you are a God of peace and order. And so Jesus, help us to see that in the midst of all that is happening around us, that we're able to see your goodness, your love, and your grace and extend it to others. Allow us to not be overwhelmed by this or that, our to-do list, or man, I got to get into this college, or I have to be able to get this career. God, help slow us down. Help us to be faithful and obedient and not be stressed out about all of these outside forces that are pushing in against us. Allow your light and your spirit to guide and direct us each and every day of our life. In your name we pray. Amen.
when the night is holding on to me god is holding And Heavenly Father, as uh, we declare that, that you are good, God, that in the midst of um, all this chaos, all the things that the devil is throwing at us, God, that we just declare that we say that you're never going to let us down. And God, when that darkness takes a hold of us, God, we are just reminded that you are holding on. God, um, as we go throughout this next week, uh, would we just hold on to that truth that uh, we know that you are within our hearts and that you guide and lead us to uh, where you want us to be and we love you so much in Jesus name we pray amen amen we're gonna go ahead and head on in just one second into the cafe not the cafe Daniel's den that's the fourth fifth mess up tonight <laughs>